بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو دس تھرڈ ویڈیو ٹوٹوریل فرام سی ایس آر ڈی یو اباؤٹ امیزون ویب سروسز ناؤ وی آر موونگ آن ٹو دی مور کمپلیکیٹڈ اسٹف وچ از دی آٹو اسکیل فیچر آف امیزون الاسٹک کمپیوٹ کلاؤڈ دیٹ از دی ای سی ٹو ویل بی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ ہاؤ یو کین ٹیک این انسٹنس آف امیزون ای سی ٹو اینڈ اسکیل اٹ اپ ایز یور ریسورس یوٹیلائزیشن انکریزز will be setting up uh, an AMI and will be defining the policies that determine how your Amazon EC2 instance or AMI is going to scale up and down depending on the usage. Now this video lecture assumes quite a lot of prerequisites and uh, you have to know quite a lot of stuff. So if you haven't watched our previous two videos or at least the second video uh, that is on Amazon EC2 you should watch that and uh, then come back here now the difference from that video and this one is that you need to create an EBS image because only EBS images can be stored between different launches if you create uh, an instance that is not of EBS volume type it will not be stored after you terminate it and you will have to do all of these configurations again so come over to your uh, EC2 management console and within these images menu click on AMIs and view EBS images and you can select a platform if you wish select one of the AMIs from these uh, all of these that you can see here uh, I went with the CentOS machine and uh, launch it after you launch it um, you can refer to the second video for details of, or details of how to launch it and after launching it come over to the instances panel and you will see that this machine is now running now you need to take note of the zone the type of the AMI and the AMI ID you will need all of these in order to configure auto scaling so once you have those things noted down head over to your put the terminal and log in to your EC2 AMI that we just launched so the first thing that you need to do within your AMI is to get Java working and you can see what version of Java you have by adding Java minus version now Java has to be within your path uh, environment variable so that it can be executed also you need to set up your Java underscore home environment variable which in our case is JRE etc etc all of this is required by the auto scaling API that we're going to download just now for that you need to head over to the developers tab on aws.amazon.com click on developer tools and then on elastic compute cloud from here you can head over to auto scaling api tools now this is basically a front end a command line front end to a java implementation of the auto scaling api calls so you can download this zip file here and copy it over to your server now once you're in your AMI you can download your auto scaling API tools which we've already done here and you need to unzip it into a folder of your choice now, this is what you get we've already downloaded the csrdu-cert.pem and csrdu-privkey.pem these are the certificate file and the private key files associated with our AWS account we'll be coming back to these two in just a moment but first the other prerequisites you need to have Java installed in your machine and accessible through your path you also need to export your Java underscore home variable which in our case is that and uh, you also need to do some other 
variables but we'll be coming back to those after we download these two certificate and private key files in order to access your AWS AMIs and auto scaling API you need the AWS certificate and private key you need to create that through your AWS account head over to aws.amazon.com and in the account menu you can find security credentials link here you have x.509 certificates and you can create a new certificate now you can download your private key file again keep it safe because Amazon does not store it and you can download it again and download your x509 certificate after that you can close it and uh, you can see that it's accessible here. now we're using this first certificate that we created earlier head over back to your AMI and uh, copy over the certificate and crypt key files that you can see here we have copied both of them here and after that you need to set up your environment variables now a point to note here is that you don't have to do all of these steps from within your AMI they can be done from anywhere because but since uh, I already have an AMI and it has fast internet access I'm just choosing to do it here now the AWS tools require some environment variables that we'll be setting right now one of those is the AWS auto scaling home and that has to be the location where you extracted your auto scaling API zip file and that is right here you also need to add your add to your path the bin folder of AWS auto scaling home so that would be AWS auto scaling home slash bin added to the path variable you also need to set the EC2 underscore private underscore key and the EC2 underscore third variables, environment variables for the API to work. And that would be it. Once you have your environment variable set up, hopefully ASCMD should work. And this shows you that the environment variables are all properly set up. Now the first thing that you need to do is to create a launch configuration which is basically going to encompass the whole uh, AMI details that you need to launch as the auto scaling feature kicks in. For that you need the as-create-launch configuration command and you need to first point to it a launch configuration name so let's call that CSRDU launch configuration LC and you need to give it the image ID and you can get that from right here right there copy that over paste it and you need the instance type which in our case is d1.micro again you can see that here hit enter now this goes over to your API call and if your certificates are all set up properly you get an ok message the second thing you need to do is to create an auto scaling group and that is as create auto scaling group and this requires a little more detail first you need to give it a name that would be csrdu auto scaling group you need to tell it about the launch configuration that would be csrdu launch configuration you need to specify the availability zones which in our case is right over here okay. you also need to specify the min size and the max size 
this is the number of instances the limits upper and lower of the number of instances that the auto scale should create min size means zero extra instances now remember one of the instances is automatically going to be running when you start your uh, instance or launch it and so if you set the minimum size to one it's going to be one extra image so you will have two total and if the max size is two at the peak load time the number of instances running would be three not two so set both the min size and the max size to one less than what you really want them to be because these are the extra ones and you also need to specify load balancers if you have them we don't have them right now so this suffices for now so we get the ok message and the final thing that we need to do is to create an uh, a trigger and that trigger basically defines when the auto scaling feature should kick in to create a trigger you need the as create or update trigger command you need to pass to it the name of trigger you need to define the auto scaling group that is csrdu asg you need to define the namespace which is aws slash ec2 you need to define the measure that is cpu utilization you need to define the statistic that is average you need the dimensions which is auto scaling scaling group name is equal to csrdusg You need the period over which this statistic would be connected that is 60 seconds you need the load threshold which is the load limit where you want the CPU to go into low usage mode let's set that to 40 you need the upper upper threshold which we can set to 50 and we need the lower threshold lower reach increment what change do you want when the lower reach is uh, triggered we need the upper reach increment we can set that to one and we need to define the reach duration that can be 120 is the minimum that would be two minutes and the trigger is created now to test whether our setup is running we put some load on the server and to do that I am going to download the source of Zen just an arbitrary command you can put load on the server any way you like this is going to put quite a lot of load on the CPU and you can see what that load is by heading over to this management console and looking at your matrix hit refresh to see if some things happen you can see that the CPU utilization has not gone above 80% and to test that maybe what we can do is to head over and uh, Let's redefine the trigger and set the lower threshold to 30 and the upper threshold to let's say 50. Well, it's going to take some time. The breach duration is 120 seconds, so it's going to take at least two minutes. And as you can see, we have now two instances running of the AMI 